With a bit of action happening with spindles of Bathurst, I thought, let's have a chat about those. I've got Paul Scalzo, who's the head of engineering here at BJR, just so he can help me explain some of the things that we've got going on. So, if we, I thought a good place to start would be what we have for the Gen 3 car, as opposed to what we used to run on the ZB Commodore. So, Paul, why don't you talk a little bit about that? I mean, they look very different. Obviously, they've got different size nuts for retention. What's going on? Why is it so different? And what's the benefit of the smaller one as opposed to the bigger one? Um, so the reason why we sort of adopted this more GT3 style design for Gen 3 as opposed to Car of the Future was so that we could move away from having excessive torques in order to retain the wheel well enough. So when you talk about that, as an example, how much torque, how tight did this have to be as opposed to this one? Uh, so we used to do this nut up to around 950 foot-pounds and now we do these ones up to around 450 foot-pounds. So this is much smaller, B begs a question, why would you do it up to about half of the torque? Uh, the smaller diameter allows us to achieve more stretch on the spindle effectively, which means we can have less torque in order to achieve the adequate level of clamping to keep the wheel tight. Okay, well that's interesting. Now, as part of this, if you have a look in the top here, Rach, you can see how the nut is retained on if it comes loose, as it has from time to time. That is what stops the wheel nut from coming off here. Same with this one. You can see these ends, which we've done videos on these before because there was about, felt like a hundred different wheel nuts, but probably five, to get it to this point where it would stay on. So this is, is the tool that we, or the part, that goes in the end here, and then that is what retains the nut on, right? And then that all gets put together and we manufacture all that here at BJR. Yeah, so on the Car of the Future spindle, the safety clip, as we called it, effectively had tangs that came out the sides and they would engage these little castellations in the, in the wheel nut. And so if the wheel nut started to back off, the pores would catch the castellations and stop it from coming completely loose or coming the wheel off. And exactly the same concept is applied on the Gen 3 wheel nut, except the castellations are in an axial direction, not a radial direction, as Brad said, you can see here on the front of the Gen 3 nut. So the next thing about, about these is they're about to get redesigned, aren't they? So uh, Waters, um, we, we were, every team I'm sure was interested that he, he broke a spindle. And um, because, you know, we all have to run exactly the same spindle, they're just manufactured by different people. Hello, Frank. So, and, and by the way, he, Frankie Modern Oak does a great job with our spindles and we've always had them done by him. So, the one that was on Waters' car um, had a touch with the wall that we saw on, on the Saturday, but it, it broke off about here, didn't it, with a nut on it retained in the wheel. That's right, yeah. So it broke sort of just at the base or, or through the first thread or two here. And not to say that the bang on the wall impacted on that, but it's one of those things that does, certainly doesn't help, right? No, I think there's sort of a number of factors that supercars and the teams themselves are investigating that might, might contribute to, to failures like that or, or cracks starting. So we've got a new spindle being designed at the moment that will probably kick into play in the next month or so. What's the difference between what we currently have and something new? Um, so really um, what they're aiming to do with the, the new design is, is strengthen it up in the areas that they feel like it might be weak, like through the threaded section here, and also try and make the spindle itself more cost effective. Right now it's made from a material called 300M, which is um, extremely high strength, but also very specialised. It's used extensively in motorsport and aircraft. Whereas if we can move away from that to a material called EN26, which is uh, still a high tensile steel, but much lower overall strength. So it is much more cost effective, but a lower strength. So we're having to redesign this in areas um, in order to make sure it's still, still adequate, still strong enough to do the job. Yeah, and it'll just be a little bit thicker through the centre section and hopefully they'll put a bit more meat on the bone. Yeah, there's a few small details, but basically there'll be some more material but behind the thread here. Um, there'll also be a small change to the bearing surfaces, but um, apart from that, yeah, it's just looking at, at making the spindle much more cost effective, but still capable of doing the job. 
and we're going to add to it a tapered roller bearing as opposed to what we currently use to try and get costs a little more under control, right? Yeah, so one of the changes for this year is that we moved away from a deep group ball bearing in the front upright to a pair of tapered roller bearings, and um, that was because they are much more suitable for the job, I guess you could say, in terms of their factor of safety. So it means that the uh, the bearing should go much longer into their life without having to be serviced or, or replaced. Okay, so that's the spindle. It's about 1800 bucks, and uh, we're gonna need about 20 of them.